Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. For today's topic, we are going to do on direct seedling methods in rice. So this topic is fairly important uh, from the exam point of view, uh, for any other agriculture exams, uh, as well as even for NABARD. It can also come in a form of a static from agriculture and it can also come from uh, current affairs as well. So my name is Hansa Nora Sangma and I've been a mentor for NABARD exam and I've done my bachelor's in horticulture and I've also completed my master's in nematology in agriculture right so uh, if you guys are new to this channel please don't forget to subscribe and you can also press the bell icon for further notifications from our channel if you've liked the video don't forget to hit the thumbs up button as well so um, to, in the first slide I've, we're gonna talk about why is it in the news why is this direct seeding method of rice in the news okay so basically recently this Punjab government they have also decided to deploy this direct seeding method of rice which is also known as a DR DSR technique okay so we also we also have another traditional method which is a transplantation method of rice where we transplant the rice okay so uh, instead of that the uh, uh, the Punjab government has deployed this use of this DSR method instead of the traditional method. So why was this uh, deployed? It was actually due to the shortage of agricultural laborers, right? So which was triggered by the um, coronavirus pandem pandemic, which was, which was going on. And because of that, there was a lot of shortage of labor. And because of the shortage of labor, uh, they, they couldn't go forward with the conventional with the conventional or the traditional method of uh, seedling of the rice. Okay, so this, uh, according to the According to the recent data, this chief minister uh, of Punjab, Captain uh, Amarinder Singh, he pointed out that at least less uh, less than at least about 0.5 million of uh, laborers out of 1.3 migrant laborers in Punjab they had left the state, and due to this, they had to go about for a different. Uh, to go about with this direct seedling method and this agriculture farmers the, the agriculture and farmers welfare department they also sanctioned about 4000 dsr machines and 800 paddy transplanting machines so these dsr machines will help in uh, sowing of the seeds of these paddies okay and these has been uh, sanctioned for the farmers on a subsidy range of about 40 to 50 percent so this guys this is very important so try to note it down and around 4000 DSR machines and 800 paddy transplanting machines. Try to remember this, it can also come in the exams as well. So, so what happens here? This DSR technique, they would also be independent in saving of about 30% of water. So this DSR method is actually a, a better method in saving water as well as in the labor. So it will save about 30% of the water uh, than the normal water which has been used by the traditional method, okay? And, and the, they will also cut the cultivation by nearly of about 6,000 per acre. Usually the farmers across the state uh, in Punjab and Haryana, they are expected to cultivate the, the, the paddy for, at about 27 like hectares, okay, during the season. And this would also include the seven like hectares, which will be under the uh, higher basmati variety of the rice, right? And these farmers, uh, they also pointed out that the shortage of labor and income economic com uh, compulsions arising of, because of this COVID-19 has compelled them to move towards to this DSR method, right? But then other than that, we also have other advantages of this DS DSR method as well, right? So these are something why this DSR method is on the news, right? And now let's move on with the slides and we're just going to talk roughly on the differences between this direct seeding method and the conventional or the traditional transplanting method. Okay, so the first and foremost you guys need to remember here is that in conventional traditional planting, the paddy seeds, they are first sown in the nurseries. It means that the seeds which are available, they are first sown in the nurseries and once they, uh, once we raise them in the nurseries, once they attain a certain height, then we will pluck out, uh, take out those uh, plants from those nurseries and we will transplant it to the main field. Okay, and in this DSR method, it is completely opposite of this traditional method. So here, the seeds, they are 
instead of transplanting, these are directly planted. So the, there is no nursery preparation or transplantation involved in this method, okay? So this is the main differences between these two. And now let's talk about this conventional transplanting. So we're gonna talk a little bit in detail about this conventional tra transplanting, okay? So the first thing, the nurseries are prepared in this, okay? And the patties, these are also, uh, the patty seeds, these are first sown in the nurseries, right? As I've talked, and then they are raised to young plants. And these young plants, these are also known as seedlings, okay? Remember, so these seedlings, then they are uprooted from these nurseries and they are planted in the main field. So it usually takes about 25 to 30 days for a seedling to grow to a certain height from where they can be transplanted right so that is one thing that you guys need to remember and another thing is that this nursery bed it is about five to ten percent of the main field so it occupies about five to ten percent of the main field but whereas in uh, uh, this direct seedling method we won't they, we won't have to use we can use those five to ten percent for growing the main crop as well okay so that is one other point that you guys need to remember so another thing that you guys need to remember here is that this process is uh, requires extensive laboring because during the transplanting time we need a lot of labor okay especially for the sweet planting right so that is the transplanting and it also requires plenty of water In this transplanting method we usually submerge the whole paddy fields in water okay so that is how this conventional farming of rice is going about right and now let us look into the uh, direct seedling method right and in direct seedling method, the seeds they are directly drilled into the fields by the tractor powered machine, as you can see in the picture here. So the seeds are directly planted to, into the field, right? So there is no need for nursery preparation or transplantation, okay? And the farmers they only uh, they only have to level their land. It means that they have to just make the beds right the land and then they have to give one pre-sowing of the irrigation because rice they consume a lot of water for their uh, growth and development okay so for rice cultivation we need lots and lots of water so this rice the in this direct seeding method they can be either uh, directly seed, uh, directly seeded through two methods, which is dry method as well as wet method. And this wet method is also known as a pre-germinated seedling. Okay, so under this, these during the dry seeding of the rice, it can be done directly by drilling the seed into the fine seed bed at a depth of about two to three centimeter. So this, uh, guys, these factual say, uh, data, these are very important from the exam perspective. So they can also ask about the difference between what is the uh, depth of the sowing for the dry seeding method of rice in the direct seeding method. So your answer would be two to three centimeter, okay? So in that way, you guys need to frame the questions and you guys can will be able to answer the questions, okay? So here the uh, in the dry seedling method, the rice, they are sown at the depth of two to three centimeter by using a power driller or a driller of the seed, okay? So that is one thing can be directly sown, a dry seed. But in a wet seeding method, they require the, a field to be harrowed and then flooded. So they need the the field should be prepared well, it should be harrowed, and then it should be uh, puddled. So uh, when the field is flooded, and the puddling will be done. So puddling of rice is also another tillage practices which are which is mostly done in the agricultural uh, practices for rice, especially for rice. Okay, so it's mostly done for the rice preparation. So what they'll do is that they will mix the water, and once it's flooded, they will mix the water with the soil. Okay. And so that is what a puddling is. So uh, this in this method, a puddling will be done, right? And then they will, the fields of the puddling and harrowing, the field is left for 12 to 24 hours. So it means that about a one day is left, right? So after that, they, then the germinated seeds of 42, 48 to 72 hours are sown using a drum seeder. So this is the main differences between this dry seeding method as well as the wet seeding method. I hope this is clear on this point. And now let us look into some of the machinery requirements that we use for the, in the, the direct seeding method. The first thing is we use is that a minimum till drill or a power 
tiller. So a power tiller, a picture of power tiller is given here. Right, so this is a power tiller, and through this, the seeds will be dropped into the basket, and then they will be sown directly. Okay, we also have zero triller, and we have a bed triller. So, so we also have a zero till drill and a bed drilling as well. So these are the machines which are used for direct seeding method. And what are the seed rates and the cultivars for this DSR? The seed rate is usually about 20 to 25 kilogram per hectare so this is very important right so this is uh, this point is very important so please note it down okay and uh, the fine grain the for the basmati cultivars they require much more or less seeds so it means that the seed rate will be lesser for the basmati cultivars and some of the tested cultivars which are suitable for this direct seeding methods these are uh, hardinat we have sabikri we have uh, Sunama Suli, we have Radha 11 and Radha 4. So these, uh, as you study about this uh, different uh, crops, try to remember the cultivars as well and the variety as well. Okay, these are very important. So I think for this year, they might also ask questions on these also. Okay, so the cultivars of this rice is very important. This is which are tested cultivars, especially for the DSR method. Okay, so try to note it down if you don't uh, have, if you have a notepad beside you, you can pause the video and you can note it down by, at the same time. Okay, and some of this seeding time that you can put here is that this, for this drill of this dry seed of the normal rice, right? So they can be done or they can be sown at the start of the monsoon, right? So that is when the farmer puts the seed into the nursery bed. During that time, you can directly plant it on the field so that is on the onset of the monsoon or the start of the monsoon it will be in june july okay so that is uh, the seeding time for this direct seeding method and for the weed management something that you guys need to remember here is that for transplanting method the weed management is uh, basically much more easier okay so as these water they prevent the growth of the weeds and how does it prevent the growth of the weeds is by denying the oxygen because when the plants are submerged in water then what happens is that the level of oxygen they go down and uh, plants they need oxygen to survive thus they die off okay and so that is one of the main reason why uh, in weed for in transplanting method the weed management is fairly much more easier right so basically and what we do in transplanting method is that for the first three weeks or so the plants they are irrigated more daily to maintain a depth of four to five centimeter above the uh, ground level okay so the land will be submerged under the water and the plants they won't be able to grow okay whereas uh for in plants uh in paddy plant what happens is that they have this cell spongy cells uh, or the tissue called the erenchyma cells okay so this erenchyma cells what it does is that they actually they they these are the tissues or the spongy tissues that form spaces or air channels in the leaves as well as in the stems and the roots of plants and these spongy tissues they allow the exchange of gases between the shoot and the root okay and so these erenchyma cells they which are present in the paddy plants they allow the air to penetrate through the roots all right and so thus the water it acts as a herbicide for the paddy in this transplanting method but whereas in the one of the advantages that dsr has is that uh, as a flood in dsr as flooding method is not done during the sowing right so the chemical herbicides they are mostly used to kill the weeds and for that we need a timely application of these herbicides and this time uh, this timing will also depend on the method of seeding okay and one or two uh, this one or two hand weeding will also provide an will also provide as an effective control for this weed so manual weeding by the laborers can also help in the uh, effective control of this uh, method of this weed uh, management okay so these are some of the things on the weed management differences mean differences between weed management right and now let's go to uh, the benefits of the dsr method right so the first and foremost thing here is that they avoid repeated puddling preventing soil degradation and poor pan formation so since the puddling uh, will be prevented and so once we submerge this water then there are higher chances of the water for 
uh, of the soil to degrade, right? Because once if you're the soil texture, even the soil content, all of that, they will also be degraded in the long run. And they once you, uh, they say that once you uh, trans, once you grow a paddy in certain area, then the whole um, soil becomes degraded, and therefore other crops cannot be grown at the same time. So that is one of the things of the disadvantages of growing paddy through this transplanting method, because it accelerates the degradation of the soil but because of this DSR method we can also prevent the soil degradation and also a plant formation. So a plant formation basically it means uh, they are more likely to form on a heavier type of soil more, uh, so it means that towards a clay side of the soil okay so these are mostly formed uh, on the subsurface horizon or the soil layer having they have a higher bulk density okay and lower porosity so these are done these, uh, these are mostly uh these are mostly happens or these are mostly a result of the pressure when they are applied by their normal tillage operations such as plows or disc and other tillage implements and these pens, they can be formed by the deposition of these iron compounds and even sometimes humus in the layer of the soil or in the subsoil, okay? So this is how this pool pan is formed and um, this can actually uh, prevent the pool pan formation as well. Another second point here is that they facilitate the timely establishment of rice and succeeding crops. So, uh, so what, so they can also by doing this method dsr method we can the crop they mature faster for about 10 to 15 days earlier than the normal transplanting method because we are doing going for a direct seedling method right we are transplanting directly and another one another point here is that it saves water by 35 to 40 percent and it also reduces the cost of production by about would be six three thousand uh, per hectare and there was also seen an increase of about 10% uh, in the yields as well okay so another point here is that it saves water uh, sorry it saves energy right the labor fuel and seed as well these are all saved since we won't be having uh, a lot of labor we don't we won't be needing a lot of labor because a lot of labor has been uh, is actually needed during the transplanting time so the labor cost is also cut down so we can also save money as well and we can also save the fuel as well as the seed okay another point how we can save the seed is that uh, during in the transplanting method we will be um, broadcasting the seeds right and at that time some of the a lot of half of the say about at least 30 to 40 percent of the seedlings will die off at that time during the uh, transplanting method um but during this dsr method since we're directly seeding into the plant into the main field then we can save a lot of seed as well another last point here is that it solves the labor it's another last point here is that it solves the labor scarcity problem, okay? So as we are already facing labor scarcity in a lot of the major uh, agriculture uh, states because of all the migrant laborers have gone back to their home because of this pandemic and therefore we are facing a lot of labor scarcity. So do you, it solves the whole labor scarcity that we're facing right now because it needs a lesser uh, labor than the normal traditional method of transplanting of growing of the rice and it also reduces the drudgery of the labor so this is a very labor intensive uh, method rice plantation is very labor intensive so it also reduces the uh, drudgery of this laborers okay so these are some of the points that you guys need to remember the basic uh, important points that you guys should remember so any questions can also come from any of this because this came in the um, news so there are high chances of this topic also coming uh, also coming in the exams as well all right so it's not only for the bar exam it can also be applicable for other a for exams and for ibps exams right so you can also refer to this and now let us just go to another slide where i've just uh, written down some of the important points that you guys need to remember okay so this is about a very important points about rice okay so rice the scientific name is orisa sativa okay and it is a stable food for almost uh, uh, in almost all the states of the uh, country right in india okay 
and uh, it is a Karif crop. It means that it requires these are grown during the summertime, okay, and during the monsoon summertime, and it requires a high temperature, which means that about more than 25 degrees Celsius, okay, and they also need a high humidity, okay, and uh, the annual rainfall it needs to be about 10 about 100 centimeter. So usually in areas where there is less rainfall, then it is most grown with the help of irrigation in areas where it is not rain fed, then it is grown in the uh, help of the irrigation. Okay, and one thing that you guys need to remember is that in southern states and especially in southern states as well as in the West Bengal, the climatic conditions, because since it is um, highly humid and the temperature is also perfect for the growing of rice so the cultivation of two to three crops of a rice in an agriculture year is possible okay so we can grow for like two to three times in a season or in a year especially about one and about one fourth of the total cropped area in india okay so one fourth of the total cropped area in india that is used under rice cultivation remember that and leading producing states as written here these are west bengal uttar pradesh and punjab okay so these are the leading states west bengal is the leading state in rice production and uh, the right in west bengal the farmers they grow this crop of rice called aus aman and boro so these are the three uh, crops of the rice right so these is mainly in the West Bengal. These are mainly called by them as West Bengal farmers. And one thing that, um, especially since we're talking about Punjab and Haryana, so in Punjab and Haryana, the entire land of the rice, these are mostly irrigated because there is a scarcity of the rainfall, right? So that's why we go for irrigation, complete irrigation in this area. So it is not rain fed, but it is irrigated. Okay, so another point that you guys should remember here is that India is also the rank number two in uh, production of rice uh, right after China, okay? And uh, India is, is the leading producer of basmati rice at a global market. And uh, the Indian states with the highest areas of, highest areas, okay, of basmati rice, these are under the production, um, these are in Jammu and Kashmir, in Himachal Pradesh, in Punjab, Haryana, Delhi, Uttarakhand, and Western Uttar Pradesh. So these are the states which produce a higher, which have the highest areas and production is also highest in these areas, okay? And according to this APEDA, in the financial year of 2018-2019, so that's the latest data given by the APEDA, India they export about 4.4 million metric tons of basmati rice to uh, outside rice and uh, near rice which is other than the basmati rice these are called as a non-basmati rice okay and uh the india they exported about seven point million metric tons of non-basmati rice which was worth about three billion US dollars right so this is something about the points that you guys remember about rice okay so and the, remember the transplanting uh, the two methods of uh planting of the rice which is a direct seedling method and the transplanting method right and under the uh, direct seedling method we also have a dry method and a wet method so try to remember all these points as well as try to remember the seed weight and some of the varieties and the cultivars that we have discussed and also the sanctioned how much the uh, government has sanctioned for this direct seedling method of rice as well okay so try to jot on all these points important points if you have no plan you can just make a summary uh, as we go by this um session right and uh well that's all for today and we'll be meeting for the next session with another content right and if you guys haven't subscribed you can subscribe to, the, to our channel and you can also press the bell icon for the notifications for upcoming exams so and you can also press the like button if you have liked the video as well thank you so much